towards the sun when that light is lost and the darkness falls. I will become a star and shine on you. I'll overcome the darkness and light up. I'll save you with my light. When the moon covers the sun, filling you with a bright light, I'll become a star and shine on you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your host, Tabas Sumbrami, coming back to accompany you from Team Bertho on the fourth episode of Ichigo Ichie. You're cherishing every moment, girl, is here. So, how are you all? Tell me. How is the family? How are the friends? I noticed that you seem really refreshed today. Yeah, I really can see you. Okay, so I am present here with you with another new episode of Ichigo Ichie, episode four. Ishigo Ishii, our live series where we invite initiators, activists, and instructors from all over the world to join us virtually and keep you, our audience, engaged with valuable discussions and skill-based sessions. This project is brought to you by Timberto and the Youth Exchange South to, ta- South to South. Oh my God. I'm really sorry for that. South to South Yes Girls Movement. Well, since I asked that, how are you guys? I suppose that you guys might be tired. So I would suggest that you guys get a little bit of cozy, even though winter is kind of gone, but there's no chance in like not getting cozy, right? So let's continue. Timberto, about Timberto. Timberto is an organization where we aim to document the understanding of life through people's learning and pass them on to you people and everyone else as innovative, creative, and effective solution for everyone to live their best life. In case if you're wondering, like I say every day, that Ichigo Ichie is a Japanese for character idiom which describes as treasuring the unrepeatable nature of a moment, usually translated as for this time only and once in a lifetime, which is actually a very cute meaning, to be honest. Just like each of the moments we live in our life is once in a lifetime moment. Like I've said in my last episode, we do not remember days, we remember moments. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. Galadriel enlightened us with this quote in Lord of the Rings. She also said that may it be a light to you in dark places when all other lights go out. Our today's guest comes to us with some secrets to how you can become a light in the darkness and light up everyone around you. Basically, empower everyone around you. Our today's guest is a teacher, teaching university students. And she is indeed a passionate teacher who enjoys using her skills and knowledge to inspire and motivate the students she teaches to drive them on their path of personal growth as she pursues an educational career and believes in youth empowerment. She is also the former president of Yep Danang Leaders Toastmasters in 2021. In 2019, she won the first award in the International Speech Contest for the Central Region of Vietnam. She was also the MC of Youth Speak Forum by ISEC, an international organization for youth. In 2020, she was also the co MC of Ted Bakdan 2019 event hosted in her own hometown, Danang. Coming to us with the topic, The Secret of Empowering Others, please welcome our guest speaker today, Gwen Q. Kwang Tan. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for me for a very, very wonderful introduction. And uh, Hello everyone again. Uh, my name is Wing Di Wang Tan, or you can call me Tang for short. And um, so uh, basically today I'm just gonna share you my very personal story and what I've learned from that. So uh, hope that everyone can like have a good time with each other and you like you may gain something for yourself from my st- my story and that's all I hope for tonight. And um, so talking about empowering others. So firstly, I would love to uh, share with you my little story. So do you remember your dream when you were a little kid? Just share. Um, So for me, for me, when I was a little kid, actually, I wanted to save the world exactly yeah like that that was me my version of uh, 15 years old and um, at 15 years old i dreamed of being the world savior and i mean it i mean i understand that i don't want to be you know like superman or captain america to save the world but 
I was really specific. I wanted to be an like an influential person to make positive impact on others. Exactly like that. It was a very very innocent yet very pure dream of mine, of a very naive 15 year old girl. And uh, you know, as time goes by, and I grow up, and um, you know. I become smarter and my perspective about the world just, you know, become broader. And I still want to save the world. <laughs> I still want to be the world savior, you know. But um, a company with that is I started to learn more and I started to learn about leadership. So, <clears throat> and that's, that's one thing I do believe like I do believe in leadership. I do believe like leadership is the fundamental solution and it can be developed in anyone. So, and moreover, moreover, I also do believe that one of the most important qualities of leadership is empowering others. I mean, to encourage others to take action. And um, so, uh, to take action to to you know like make positive impacts on other people, to make them better and stronger and more confident and more motivated. And together with time, I also learn about myself much better. So I'm really aware of myself. Like I'm kind of confident, and I'm quite good at speaking in front of the crowd. And trust me, I love that feeling when I can talk in a front of a lot of people. So that's the reason why one day, one beautiful day, when I read the sentence, those master where leaders are made. And also like where people can come and talk a lot. So I try the club. So let me give me a really brief introduction about Toastmaster. It's like an international club helping people to develop public speaking and answer leadership. So me, a very young lady who really likes the stage and very confident in my speaking skill and wants to develop leadership, I was willing, totally willing to submit a very expensive fee right away and become a member and have a chance to go to the stage just to talk and with the belief that by talking, by giving speech, I can make impact on people to save the world, you know? And life is a very young, a very, a very amazing journey. So, you know, in Toastmaster, I made about a lot of speeches. So after six speeches, I didn't make any impact on anybody. Because, you know, like there was nobody coming to me and tell me like, hey, your speak inspired me. I received nothing like that. So good news, this is kind of really a big failure to me. So after like six speeches with nothing, in my seventh, in my seventh speech, I made it over time. So this is a thing that you should know about Toastmaster speech. Like there are a lot of rules and one of the most challenging rule is the time limit so we only have seven minutes for one speech and if you are going to run out of time there will be a red car show to your face so you see the sad story is i was over time in my seven speech but not like five seconds or 15 seconds but like two minutes and a half over time and what's worse when i was talking about my speech talking talking a lot on the stage still in the middle of my speech and then i saw the red car warning me like to be over time so i was so scared and then i started to forget some of my script and you know like to to come to the stage of toastmaster i prepare so much and a lot and when I was so scared, everything just, you know, went out of my mind. I started to forget the script. And then when I, I know that I already run out of time, I still keep talking. And then that moment, I paused a little bit. I took a very, very deep breath to make sure that I can calm down. 
And then I forgot all the words. It was really horrible. So I started to say some really kind of messy words, really stupid that I cannot remember what I said. And it was a really disaster to me. And like in the end, I could not make any impactful conclusions that I intended to do in my speech. I could not even make a complex speech, even though I was over time. And when I finished the speech, it was really a big disappointment to me. I felt really awful. Like after seven speeches, I'm still the same as the beginning, not as good as I thought about myself. And for one moment, all of my confidence just went away. And I had, I had to, you know, like finish my speech and then I got back to my seat in a very, very big disappointment about myself. And when I was sitting and couldn't hear anything, like the other speakers coming to the stage, I couldn't hear anything. And then suddenly one moment, there was one person sitting in front of me and she just turned around and she whispered to me and this is what she told me hey thank you so much for your speech i've learned a lot from that it helped me a lot in my project that i'm working on and uh, she is a um, 65 year old lady from the US. She was visiting my country, Vietnam. And guys, those very simple words brightened up all my whole gloomy night. For the very first time, after a lot of speeches, for the very first time, my speech empowered someone well, actually, that's not someone, that's one of my audience. And for the very first time, my speech empowered a person, a real person. And that's, you know, that's the most meaningful thing to a speaker. And to be honest, to be honest, honestly and sincerely, that very moment, I was feeling like, well, finally saving the world, you know, that what really matters here. It's so meaningful to me. But the thing is, the best thing that matters that night is that those, those very simple yet powerful words from that one single audience actually saved me. Those were pulled me out of despair and made me believe in myself and believe in my childhood innocent dream to save the world, you know, those were really empowered me. So that story reminds me of one lesson that another friend taught me like four years ago. So this is a very delicate and I'm going to speak really slowly. So this is what she told me four years ago. It's very important for leaders to empower them empower their members. But, but from another perspective, when the members tell the leaders that how the leaders are supporting them, making good impact on them, at the same time, the members are also empowering the leaders back. So it's true. This is true for real life too, not just in teamwork or just leader to member. So which means that when people empower you and you let them know, you say thank you to them. So at the same time, you are having the chance to empower them back. Isn't this so amazing? That night, maybe to some extent, my speech helped one person, my speech may empower one person, 
But what's so amazing is that that person told me I have her. And that specific action empowered me back. In that very dark moment, when I finished my speech and lose hope in myself. So, uh, Madam Host, from me and all the beloved audience who's listening. So, what I want to do today is in this live stream, just sharing with you the lesson that my friend taught me four years ago, but I could just understand like two years ago. So, again, when you tell someone that they've empowered you and you say thank you to them, maybe you are empowering them back. And maybe, you know, at some parts of their life, possibly some really dark moments, your words may brighten up their life. I know it's true because it's happened for me. So maybe tonight, you know, uh, after this section, think about that person that who has empowered you in this life. And maybe you can tell them about it. A company with the two symbol yet really powerful word, thank you. And you know, that's how, that for me, my secret of empowering others. Yeah. That was indeed very nice to hear. And true that the words of empowerment it's not just, it can't just come from just a speaker who spe speaks on stage, basically. It can come from someone who is just your friend. And that friend just comes up to you and be like, your words really empowered me. Thank you so much. And you get a boost of motivation and an empowerment moment, I guess. Like, this is such a wholesome feeling that you can't even describe in words the way, how you, the way you feel empowered. So thank you so much for that insight. And true, you, your childhood innocent dream was that you'd become Captain America one day and you'd save the world. <laughs> and you've grown up and basically you are playing a role in saving the world, which is like amazing if you think about it. Like years have passed and you've grown up and a lot of people tend to let go of their innocent childish dreams when they realize that how cruel the world is, they just tend to let go. They just adapt to survive. Yeah. But when someone like you who holds on and they're so motivated by the fact that I have to save the world, even if it's just 1% of it, I am going to do it. So this was very amazing of you. I really like related and enjoyed to all of this stuff you said. Thanks so much okay. for me and yeah. It's my pleasure. It's really my pleasure. And now I want to ask you about the part that talking in front of a crowd. So let me ask you, what was your first experience? Like, even if you said that you felt a little bit intimidated for the first time when you wanted to talk in front of a crowd, but what do you suggest to our audience who just wants to start talking, basically, who just wants to start talking on stage they want to empower others and they're looking for a platform. What are your tips for them? Uh, well, I um, I don't think I'm going to give the tips. I mean, like, it's just it's like, I, for me, that's only one thing. Uh, like, it's kind of a motto for myself. So uh, if you want to talk to people, the, the very fundamental thing comes from the story. So, uh, I mean, there can be a lot of tips for people to, you know, like to get their confidence and come to the stage and to talk. But for me, um, the 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 only thing is that that like to make you a speaker and then come to the stage is your story. That's the very first thing that I, for me, the only and the number one thing that you need to work on. And you know, story comes from life. Story comes from your experience. So yeah, for me, I think people need to, you know, experience life first to gain, you know, like to look for material for yourself. And when you have the story, you will know how to convey it very naturally. Of course, it has to come with, you know, practice. But first thing first, it must be your story first. Yeah. 
exactly like um i have once heard in a song it's actually a song lyrics that whatever it's common for me might be unique for someone else even yeah. if i tell someone a story which is completely generic to me and myself generic to my life it could be unique to someone else's life it could be unique and useful to someone else who is listening to you so obviously conveying story is definitely important all right and then after that i want to say that you have talked about leadership nowadays leadership is indeed a very important personality trait that people want to pick up since we are accelerating in whether you say in student life whether you say in workplace leadership is indeed a very important trait and it comes hand in hand with public speaking so what would you suggest to people who want to develop their leadership skills and they're just solely working on that public speaking skills like they have a lot of things to talk about right but all of that is like stuffed up inside me i don't know how to convey it to others so what is the practice of like oozing those words out to other people so you're asking about <coughs> uh only public uh only like public speaking right yeah like basically what i'm specifically asking is like someone who wants to develop their skills of public speaking they have a mm-hmm. lot of things to say but it's all in mm-hmm. their head they can't just mm-hmm. put it out of their mouth what would you suggest to those people uh well so my advice is all about preparation i mean um <clears throat> like for me to have a seven minute speech on the stage i have to prepare like at least three hours at home yep so like the basic step like i uh, have my story i write it down it, it's up to you you can you know like write the full script or you can you know like note some main points and um <clears throat> Just, you know, the very first step is start to talk. And when you start, you know, opening your mouth, your mouth and you will see like what you need to adjust, for example, like uh, the speed of like the pace, how fast or how slow it should be. Or <clears throat> along with that is very technique, a very like, um, that very specific, very distinctive technique of speak public speaking, which is your body language. Yeah. So um my advice about body language is like just go with go with the flow. I mean, some people they very how say like very uh um they just follow very rigidly uh the content of the the content of the script i mean like for example for example like uh the script is talking about sadness or happiness or the script was talking about um a house for example so many people try to you know like illustrate illustrate so much of their content and it becomes really how say ridiculous so for me my advice is for your for for your body language just you know be natural just go with the flow uh be comfortable with all your body and express uh your emotion not just you know don't need to strictly follow the content of the words uh to illustrate yep and um I mean, like, if 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 talking about you know like techniques in public speaking, there are a lot. But like, if you ask me, like, for a beginner who has a lot of things to say, uh, for me first, you need to practice at home a lot, uh, especially work on your script. I mean, if you confident with what you're saying, like, you successful halfway already. Yeah, so you need to make sure like you know all everything, you understand everything, you remember everything you want to say, so that you have confidence enough, you know. 
um, <clears throat> and then try to practice at home. And for body language, just try to be natural. Just go with the flow. Don't you know? Don't push yourself too hard to follow the content, to you know illustrate so strictly the content of your script. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so that's like my two advice for beginner. If you want like to have the chance to go to the stage and talk, yeah. Okay, so speaking of body language, this is actually a personal a personal question of mine, which is that uh, some people who do like presentations or tech talks on stage, some people tend to walk around the stage. They cover the whole mm -hmm. stage while talking, and there are some people who are just like standing very still. And they just deliver their speech. So, do you think that covering the whole stage while walking, while delivering their speech, could be distractful for the audience? Could it be a distraction, or could it be more entertaining? Well, um, distraction or not depends on the reason why people move on the stage. Actually, you know, um, <clears throat> so. It is. It it would be very very distractful if the speaker moves around the stage without purpose. I mean, I mean, you just go up, go down, or go left, go right without noticing you are moving your body. It's very distractful. But but if you move purposefully, for example, for example, a very basic and simple technique in public speaking is like when you make a conclusion, you should you know move backward. You know, something like that. Uh, so so it's just like you move with purpose. You see, uh, that's the difference. So it's just not about whether okay. you should move or not, but it's about like moving with purpose. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh huh. Okay, we have this comment on screen, and I've been seeing it for a while, and. Uh, Wow, your sharing definitely touched my heart, which touched my heart too, which definitely touched a lot of people's heart. There's another comment saying, wow, thank you for your wonderful sharing. See, you have quite a fan base there, don't you? Would love to know and inspire more from our speaker today. Well, basically, you're here to talk about the secret of empowering others and the ironic fact is you are talking about this topic while you are actually empowering others, which is like truly amazing and, and iconic. Okay, so let us move on to some of our audience questions. The first question is, what do you not have that you really, really want? That's a tricky question, to be honest. I would have like a long list. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. that you do not have that you really really want <laughs> why <laughs> why do you give me such a really hard question like that <laughs> world peace mm, so you see like there are a lot of things we do not have um i mean so the same the same as from me i can you know have a very very long list um so for example for example i want to have much money <laughs> really uh, <laughs> right uh i i want to um i want to have more time uh yeah i want to i want to have more time with our people who i love but i but i cannot have more you know it's like this limit, right? Um, Don't you ever wish that there would be 48 hours in a day? Uh, I don't wish that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I just wish like I don't need to, you know, uh, spend time sleeping or eating. <laughs> Still, you know, have time to do other things that I want. Um, okay, so back to the question. What do you not have that you really, really want? 
um this is a very um very uh sentiment sen sentimental question to me uh yeah it somehow really makes me feel really emotional so um i think uh <laughs> i think it's my father's love yeah oh yes. that really, was I, honestly uh it's my father's love yeah like yeah it is a question that like brings back memories and makes me emotional and everything it just brings on a different mood and your answer was like really smart apart from that lane so oh we have another viewer here who said hello I think okay, it's kind so of late that. night, right? Yeah? I think it's kind of late night. Well, yeah, they might be a little bit late, but they can always watch the replay, right? Uh -huh. Even though I would choose the live over the replay. But when the live's over, what can we do? So our last question for you is about Team Berto. What do you think about us? The initiatives we do, the live stories we share, what is your insight on us? Just feel free to judge us. Okay, so um, anything, you know, like from my observation and what I know, I, I mean, um, I, I, I do not know fully about you guys. So just very personal and uh, basic understanding of my, is it okay? Yeah, it's definitely okay. Yeah, so uh, I think I've just mentioned to Moshiro before. So for me, um, Team Bertho is something really impressive to me. When when I know like what, about what you're doing, and and so you know like how you are recognized and rewarded, it's it's really impressive to me. Um, I mean. You can see like there are a lot of projects out there doing meaningful things, but like to to have recognition is another thing. Um, and also, uh, also for me, one another impressive thing is like you are how say like you are connecting the world. I mean, I mean for 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 me from what I know. Uh, most of the projects that I know is like very locally. Yep. But what you are doing is really meaningful. And like you are connecting the whole world, especially young people, the whole world. That's what I love the most. Um, and also I, also, I love the way you diversify uh, your platforms and also uh, the... Um, the digital form that you are conveying your message, like through stories, like uh, through text, through videos, and then like this, like through live stream. So very diverse and very creative way, I believe. Um, <clears throat> that's that's really amazing. So yeah, that's that that's from me, and I hope it's. It's true. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope I have good understanding about you guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, for me, you know, like, so the way you are doing, the impact you make in and also how you gain recognition. The one last thing that I really love is, I think this is what make you guys unique is the people of Team Bertho. I mean, this is the first time I uh, have a chance to talk with from me. Um, basically, I only know your Mushido. <laughs> but but uh, I, I, I mean, I always adore him. I love his energy. I, ho I love his vibe, his enthusiasm, and also how smart he is. And now I, I have a chance to get to know you from me and see the way you do the host for tonight's live stream. It really blew up my mind. And even though like we just had some kind of half hour talking with each other, um, but for me, it's just a really great talk. And I, I, I feel like 
I love the time, the chance that I have to talk with you and like to get to know you. So you see, like human is, I mean, like human is what make the team, right? And I just love that. Thank you so much. And you definitely do have a very good understanding of us from the way you shared your opinion, and definitely spot on. Like you said. That we connect people. Connectivity is definitely the thing we aim for. Like making every story count, making every life count, and just basically the thing we target. So you totally got spot on there. And thank you so much for complimenting my hosting. By the way, like I said, that I empowering love, others has definitely empowered me. Thank you so much. Even though I was a little bit out of it today than my usual self, but yet you've complimented my hosting. Thank you so much. This really means a lot to me, Tan. I love the way you talk and how you were listening so carefully to what I said, and I love that way. And yeah, <coughs> you should be confident. Like you have the vibe, very perfect vibe for being a host. Thank you so much, Tan. This really means a lot, and I have had a really good time with you. I really enjoyed listening to you talk, and I indeed learned a lot of things from the experience you've shared with us in this live. So this has been truly a pleasure, honor, and totally immaculate vibes. Thank you so much, Tan, for having here with us, and. I guess we have to close our curtain today. This was a pretty short session, but it was a wholesome session. It was an educational session, and I hope that people who are trying to go for leadership and public speaking development phase, you guys should definitely use the experience and the tips. I guess you could listen from Tan, and you can definitely implement those in your own life, in your own place. In your own workplace. So, like I've said in the intro, that even the smallest person can change the course of future. And don't ever think that you might be small, because no one's ever small. I probably, I might probably think that I'm probably not large enough, not, not large of a person to change the course of the future, to empower others. Don't ever think that. You're obviously worth something. You're obviously worth of being a light in someone's life, someone who might be listening to you, someone from your family, friends, whoever it is. Just don't ever give up on trying to empower others. So that was it for today. Thank you so much for joining this live of Ichigo Ichi A. We will come back with our next episode. I don't know when, but we will come back. Let that be a surprise. So I will close the curtain for today. Be the light in someone's life, and definitely, even though for COVID everything's opening, educational institutions are opening. Be sure to wear your mask. Don't forget to wear your mask, people. Okay, so that was it. Let's close the live for today. This was Tabasun Promi. Love yourself. Love myself. Peace. Thank you. <laughs>